And that profiling process, what, what are the most sort of effective ways that you've found? Is it questionnaires? Uh, is it interviews one-on-one with the athletes? Like what are some of your favorite ways? It's a mixture of both, right? I mean, there's quite a number of profiling tools out there now. The uh, Myers-Briggs, um, Strength Deployment Inventory, Hogan, um, those. And look, there's an associated cost that comes with those. Um, which in most cases, uh, coaches don't have access to that sort of funds to do it. But reading about those, you can actually sort of pick um, the styles of people by understanding those those profiling tools. Uh, I, I use a prof. I use the strength deployment inventory with my team at the moment. We add as new staff members come along, we get their profiles added. So then we've got a team profile and then people understand the team profile and who sits where I have a predominance of, um, people orientated, um, staff and process orientated staff, believe it or not. And then the, um, my my sort of leaders within my team are actually moved towards the outcome orientated situation. What would you say, uh, sort of the most, I guess, top three for, for technical skills for the current S and C sort of performance coach to develop. It, it's actually backing what you're looking at. I think that's something that's become um, less and less of a trait of late. Is you want to refer to, oh, we measured this and we got this number. No, what are you looking at here? Um, I had some interns last year where um, we've got them on um, force decks and we're doing you know, a force profile of the athlete and they're generating and I'm making a number up here, but you know, um, 3000 newtons, uh, of force output. And it's like, Oh, well, we need to now design a, a six week program to actually get that up to the 4,000 newtons that we're after. And when you actually look at how they move to do the, to do the movement, you went, uh, they don't need six weeks. You can fix it in 10 minutes. Um, because they haven't got this in the right position and that in the right position, but they don't know because they don't know what it feels like. So look at the athlete. Do they move in the correct framework? But yeah, some tips or tricks um, for improving communication with athletes. Perhaps you're, you're briefing a, a large group before they're about to start a session. Um, yeah, how do you improve engagement and, and retention yeah. of information? It's, it's being open yourself in that it's not, um, you've got to present yourself as being um, flexible, taking on board different um, ideas. So it's it's pitching it in a way that um, not being dictatorial because you'll get half of the group will switch off uh, in terms of, oh, here they go, they're telling us what to do, to do again. Um, it's actually outlining why you're doing it and what the expected outcomes are, and you want feedback from them if they don't believe they're moving towards the expected outcome, uh, and how can we shift or deviate and pivot on on those aspects to make sure that we are moving towards the outcome that that we're actually targeting. Um, so it's being uh, it's open and honest about where you're going with things. In terms of visualization, is that yeah you know, demoing movements? What are some other sort of visual tools that you can do to um, yeah, help with that process. It's u- using the um, the competition context as well in terms of um, people who do it well. Uh, so have a competition, um, you know, video clip of this is the the high performer doing it. This is what we want to get to, or this is how we want it to be done. Um, as effectively, they have certain ranges that they they utilize. This is where you're at. Um, and this would be what we would perceive as the gap. So what are the stepping stones we're going to take to get there? Because uh, it's not the same for everyone. Um, so it's outlining that. So you get them to buy into that process as well. If you outline it completely and they've got no um, buy into it, you're not going to get the, the progression that you're after anyway. What are sort of your do's and don'ts when it comes to management uh, of, of staff? It's pretty much asking them how they're going to go about things rather than telling them how to go about things. You want you want to utilise their expertise. You want them to buy in and own um, where they're going with things. So you're really the, the navigator there. It's more around saying, you know, uh, okay, so how are you going to how are you going to fix that? How what are you going to put in place to actually move that along? What's your thoughts here to maximise this outcome? Uh, and get them to talk about it and sort of, you know, just 
check and challenge in an open and honest way and provide a psychologically safe environment for that to happen. I don't think we spend enough time um, working on, you know, having trust and honesty and in an environment. And in high performance sport, that is difficult because everyone moves around in a relatively short period of time, really, 